everybody and welcome back at Adobe Live. I'm your host, Clady, and I'm here with a brand new episode of How to Graphic Design. So thank you so much for joining me. I can see in the chat we have Cody Bear, Robert, Penny, Rick, uh, Jack Watson, Carol, Steve. Ciao, ciao, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here at Adobe Live. As I said, we are here with a brand new episode of How to Graphic Design. Today, we're going to be talking about how to create greeting cards. Yes, it's that time of the year where it's time to uh, create uh, some lovely cards that you can send to your family and friends. And today, I want to show you how you will be able to do that uh, by simply leveraging the power of Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop, Creative Clouds. So yeah, Creative Libraries, Adobe Stock. So the entire power of the Creative Cloud family. And as I like to say that, um, entire environment that is at your fingertips in order to have fun and create custom graphics that you can make your own and share with the ones you love. If you have any chat, uh, please, uh, if you have any question, please use the chat on behance.net slash live. That is the place where I read your question. I can see Van Damme back in the chat and Lee. Hi guys, nice to see you again. Um, and also any question related to what you do, to what we do here, to the app in particular, if there is anything that you want to do, we have this hour together. So let's get started. Um, also, if you just want to sit and relax, you can just simply uh, subscribe on the Adobe Live YouTube channel. And here you will find many episodes of how to and much, much more on Adobe Live. There is always a design party um, ready for you there to learn and sharpen your techniques and your skills using the amazing apps. Perfect. So uh, let's go ahead and let's jump in my computer so we can start to see what we're going to be creating today. I will provide some free templates we're, once we're done. Uh, but let's go ahead. I want to show you right away a little bit of what I was working on and we're going to be creating together. Here we go. Perfect. You should be able to see it now. Um, so as you can see, this is the result of what we're going to be working on. So those are some greeting cards. And here's the, uh, a little bit of a mix of something that I've created, something that I found on Adobe Stock. So I basically personalized what I found on Adobe Stock in order to create uh, a bespoke card that, uh, you know, that I wanted to personalize that is more uh, closer to what my taste is and my illustration is. And then, oops, sorry. I just used the wrong mouse. I have two laptops here and I have uh, about three screens in front of me. So <laughs> I got a little confused. Perfect. OK, so this is one of the card. This is another one. If we have time, um, I'm going to create some pattern as well because uh, I want to show you how to create as many cards as possible. As I said, um, those are the illustrations that I've designed myself and I will make available. It's just a matter of time. Um, I didn't I wasn't able to share it right away. But if you go ahead and check out my website, I am you will be able to uh, download this right after the stream because you can see they're already ready to go. OK, so once we're done uh, creating this card, so you can see this is the actual type from Adobe Stock that I've leveraged and then intertwined with my illustrations. Uh, we're going to jump inside InDesign and I will teach you how to uh, create a file ready for print right away inside InDesign. Maybe how to create the pages that are next to each other um, ready for the printer. Maybe we can add some other little detail, which I think is really cute when creating a card, you know, like made by or made with love and maybe the year that you've created it. Because you can also uh, use this design to perhaps print and sell your card yourself. Maybe you can upload it on a website that prints are for you on demand, uh, like, for example, Redbubble, or I'm sure there are many other, other out there. Um, so, yeah, let's go ahead and jump into Illustrator to get started uh, step by step. As I said, we're going to be creating a library, downloading stock from Adobe Stock, um, customize it with illustration. I'm going to show you how to illustrate using shape and then bring everything inside InDesign and then from there set it up for print. So we've got a lot of work to do. Your questions are welcome as usual. As usual, Mandewa, Caroline, thank you so much for joining us here. Rick Adams, our all the cars are all done and ready. Go out on December 1st. Uh, first time I didn't procrastinate. Amazing, Rick. That's an amazing timing. OK, let me know also if you have a specific theme that you like for your cards. And uh, once we say that, let's go ahead and let's open Illustrator. 
So once you open up Illustrator on page or welcome screen, you are uh, welcomed by this what's new window, which is uh, there to showcase everything that is ready uh, at your fingertips and is uh, the new introduction of Illustrator 2023. As you probably know, during Adobe Max in October, uh, we had this massive release with uh, so many wonderful new features. One of them is intertwined. We're going to talk about it today. We're going to explore it. But of course, we have the magic Adobe Express that allows to bring all this graphic together. Now, Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Express, Adobe Photoshop, they're all linked and you can leverage all this illustration in order to create amazing graphics in just a snap. Perfect. So we have some quick action that have been also now implemented um, and you can save time by um, uh, applying all this style and text just in one go. Um, and uh, so much more expanded in 3D, invite to edit and share for review, which are pretty, pretty amazing. And also something that we're going to be looking at today is copy and paste from InDesign, which will allow you by simply using the command C or control C on Windows to copy and paste whatever you create in Illustrator, in particular text uh, with different appearances, right into InDesign without losing control of all the um, everything that you've created. Okay, perfect. So let's go ahead and close this window first so we can start by creating a new file. Click on the blue button or press Command N, Control N to open up a new file. And here you'll be able to set up your file depending on what is the output that you're looking to produce. So in this case, we're looking to produce a, a file for print and uh, therefore we're gonna go ahead and set our intent for print. Here it is on top of the new document window here you will see that we have uh, uh, the new document that let us know what is the final output for your design and of course we're going to go ahead and select uh, print once you do so you have access to some uh, blank document presets which are within this window here located on the left side on the document you can also click on view all presets in order to access further presets if you wish to do so. Uh, those are standard sizes. As you can see, we have a letter size, A4, print large, legal, tabloid, A3, B4, B5. And just underneath the blank uh, document sizes, you have also access to templates. So let me go ahead and zoom in. You can see we have already some greeting cards, uh, paper, different sizes, or maybe a calendar, menu. So we already have uh, um, Illustrator there giving you a prompt, giving you a way to jumpstart your project by accessing these templates. Now, if you click on each one of these templates, they are already from Adobe Stock. So you can go ahead and see a preview and download it. Uh, you can also see the author of this uh, template uh, and so much more. You can also see a preview document uh, or explore more in Adobe Stock, which is that what is we're going to be doing in just a second. Uh, if you wish, you can browse Adobe Stock directly from this document window. You really have uh, uh, really many opportunities just right away, right away from this uh, uh, window to also browse uh, Adobe Stock library. As you can see, we have a search bar and you can find more of what you want. Just real quick, if you change your intent, so for example, if you're gonna to start to create something for web, the templates and the presets do change. So make sure to set up for success by selecting uh, uh, the tab that represent the output for your file. In this case, let's say we're gonna create uh, greeting cards to ship for Christmas and all the wonderful holidays that are coming up. So let's go ahead and select print in order to make sure that Illustrator will set up the document setting uh, for our printed document. Let me see if there is any question in the chat. This is uh, Peas is saying, wishing you all happy holiday mood. Yes, it's already the time of the year. Annika, lovely to see you. Me and Annika had the chance to give her a 3D hug. Last week I was in visiting Toronto. I was in Toronto and in Chicago. Uh, for a little bit and uh, me and Annika managed to find some time to um, just share a drink and share a hug and it was so amazing to see her in person. Uh, she's absolutely lovely and we can see here on the stream she does uh, a lovely InDesign stream here on uh, Adobe Live and uh, it was just like it's amazing. We spent so much time in this wonderful safe community that once, once we get to know each other, once we experience each other and actually then see each other in person, it was pretty much the same thing. I felt like I know her already. So that was that was really beautiful. Hi, Annika. OK, so let's go ahead and select print. Now, there are a few more things that you want to uh, make sure to fill in before you move forward in terms of your presets details. So your document details here, uh, you can go ahead and start naming your file. So I'm going to go ahead and name this file greeting cards. 
and then you can start by selecting the width as i said you can pick any of these blank document presets that's absolutely up to you or you can uh, choose different other presets so for example if you want a greeting card that is sort of this size here so this is like an uh, adobe express greeting card this is an a6 size so it's one of the smallest form smallest format uh, that you can print and then if you want to there is another size for these other greeting cards this is something that i designed a while ago it's a little bit bigger so this is an a5 and a5 is usually sorry this is still an a6 actually this is still an a6 because when you open it up you can see the a6 is basically half of an a5 and then um an a5 is actually a half of an a4 so this will be an a4 which is like a letter full letter document uh, and uh, an A5 will be actually half of it. So this will be the entire card. Yeah. So this all this space is an A5 and then A6 is basically half of that. Does it make sense? So this is, this is an A6 or an A5 folded. So that's A5 folded into an A6 shape. Or you can also have a full A4 folded into. Uh, let me see if I can find a piece of paper that we can use here. So you can use a full, full paper and then fold it into uh, an A5 um, greeting card. I think A6 is the most used one. They're cute, they're nice, they're not too large. Uh, this is kind of sort of a standard format for greeting cards. And you have enough space to write because at the end of the day, you have a full A5 in the middle uh, to actually be able to, um, to write on all your love uh, to your friends. Okay, so in terms of shape, if you're looking to an A4, we have here, um, as I said, is 210 by 297. So there will be like a full uh, A4 document, which is uh, um, an American legal legal paper as well. If you're looking to do a half of an A4, all you have to do, because it's exactly is a half, there will be 210 by 148. And if you're looking to do um, an A6, which is what we're going to be producing today, the measurement will be 148 uh, by um, 105. So let's go ahead and start by creating the 148 by 105. And once you put the number in right away, Illustrator lets you know if you're working with uh, a portrait or a landscape, you can also change that by simply clicking on the uh, icon. So in this case, I'm going to go landscape. Uh, sorry, I'm going to go portrait. That means that I'm looking to do a vertical card. So this is what is called portrait. And this will be a landscape is absolutely up to you or you prefer designing uh, I kind of like the vertical just it's just easier to write on a card on a vertical space uh, but let's go ahead now and uh, keep looking and what are um, the settings that define our document for print uh, Carolyn saying oh you met up that's a so nice yes it was so so lovely uh, to meet up in person okay so other specification that you have here with the print uh, output we have the color mode so the color mode is cmyk stands for cyan magenta yellow and k for black which is the key color for printing uh, and uh, those are this is the acronym acronym for the color mode that is a standard color mode for printing uh, if you do change into web you will see that the color mode will change into rgb red green and blue standard color mode for digital productions so therefore for screen uh, the raster effect that again this is just industry standard is 300 ppi uh, so it's 300 pixel per inches this is the standard um, raster effect for printed documents so whenever you send something to print make sure that this is set up to 300 ppi if you don't know what i'm talking about that is the reason why you should set up your document with a print intent because illustrator does everything for you i'm just showing you um what is changing but it you know, I haven't touched anything. There is already everything there. Okay. If you want to, you can also add more settings here. And uh, we're looking to do that. In particular, we're adding the bleed. We talked about a bleed quite a few times. The bleed is the space that sits outside our trim line for a document. It will allow us, it will allow us to extend the background to make sure that we do not have any error uh, showing up while the card or your document is printed i'm going to just select it for now and then i'm going to show you where it sits inside the document and how to use it so let's go ahead and set up our three millimeter bleed this is usually the standard uh, measurement that's uh, the safe area is safe enough three millimeter is safe enough 
for the printer to make a mistake and for us to cover up the mistake before um, anyone else can spot it. So three millimeter or not 0.1 to five inches is the way to go for printed documents. And when ready, simply create, click on create document and then your document will open up. Here, once we create our document, we haven't saved it yet. So let's take the time to press Command S, start saving your document. You can choose to save it in your Creative Cloud on or your machine, that's absolutely up to you. I'm just gonna go ahead and place it on the desktop just right now, so when, if we need it, it's just gonna be a little bit easier to find it. And here we have, we have our document. The white area is called Artboard, and this is the place that will display our design. The black line that is located, let's go ahead and zoom in here, uh, that is located outside the white artboard is the trim line. So that is exactly where the document is gonna be trimmed. In fact, if we go into view here on the top menu and we select trim view, you will see that everything outside this black line will disappear. And this is great, by the way, to preview your design. If someone is walking in and you wanna hide everything else that is outside the artboard, uh, let me go ahead and show you over here. So for example, let's say that I have all the color palette. If I click on view and then trim view, everything this outside this line will be hidden. And now you can simply go ahead and uh, deselect trim view to go back and show everything else that sits outside the trim, so outside the artboard. Okay. Um, so here, another thing that we notice is this red line. Now, this red line is the bleed area. The bleed area works uh, as a safe space for you to extend your background. So for example, here, if you have this card and we have this blue background, what happens if the printer may shift its blade and cut, um, instead of cutting exactly on that specific edge, it cuts a little bit off, maybe for just a tiny millimeter or just a tiny, tiny bit, top or bottom or on the side, what if that cut is not exactly as precise? Well, that exactly, um, what will happen is that we will have a white line displaying. So let's see if the printer hasn't cut this properly, we might have a little bit of a white line showing at the top. And what the bleed does is allow us to extend the background over the trim. So even if the printer will cut this not perfectly straight, we do not see the white edges coming through because a thoughtful designer has been there extending the background and making sure that it's the same color of the main background. And therefore, if the printer will perhaps uh, do a mistake and um, you know just cut it just outside, we will still be covered by the background thanks to the bleed area that is there uh, to create this safe uh, safe margin for uh, the printer. And by the way, the printer no, do not just make mistakes. It's usually our machine called guillotine. Uh, they work by hair suction. So they have these big, big stacks of papers uh, that are been moving around with the machine. And that's why whenever they move all together, there might be a little bit of a slip up. And this is calculated to be of a maximum margin of error of three millimeter. And this is why we reflect this margin of error within the bleed. And that's why that is exactly three millimeter millimeter or not point one to five inches. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have any uh, question, make sure to use the chat and I'll be uh, happy to explain even more. Barbara is saying, I hope you enjoy Chicago, my home for the first half of my life. Oh, Barbara, I absolutely love Chicago. It's one of my favorite cities. I find it very romantic, very active. I've actually I've been visiting Frank Lloyd Wright's house uh, and studio, which was oh, so such a, a a wonderful feeling to be walking his, in his marvelous house. And then I had a walk around other properties that he designed. I had no idea that Frank Lloyd Wright was based in Chicago. Um, so that was, you know, pr pretty, pretty fantastic to discover that and so much more. Chicago is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful city. Okay. So let's go ahead now that we have our document set up, what we can do before we get started is to start creating multiple artboards. We can access the artboard tool by uh, using the shift O shortcut or also by using uh, this little tool, this little uh, button located inside the toolbar called artboard tool. As you can see, every time that you hover or click on a tool, you will be able to see also the shortcut in this case, shift O. So if you ever forget the shortcut, you always hover on the tool. And by using the, uh, by selecting the artboard tool, you have different things that you can do here. You can move your artboard anywhere you want. You can use the option key while you click and drag to create a copy. Uh, or you can simply freehand draw. So by clicking and drawing here, 
you can create another artboard. So what I tend to do is to always have a work in progress artboard over there. That's probably where I'm gonna develop my illustration. Um, maybe I can place the Adobe Stock illustration. And uh, if you create too many artboards and you want to delete it, simply again, select it. As you can see, whenever I click on the artboard, it will have um, a line under uh, around it that is blue of color and will allow you to either resize by clicking one of the corner of the um, uh, of the artboard itself or by pressing the return key you have access to the artboard option where you can name your artboard so there could be artboard number four you can change its width or height you can change its orientation um, and uh, you can also make sure to delete it if you want to do so by the way, you can click and press delete uh, once you select the artboard as well, if you wish to delete it real quick. All the artboard options that we've seen in the pop-up window are also reflected inside the properties panel. So if you want to edit your artboard, simply select it. And then here under the properties panel, you will be able to perform many other transformation like changing the width and height, changing by using presets, changing between landscape and portrait. In just a click, you will be able to do so much more. And uh, here, when you see this little tick, move artwork with artboard, this is when you copy an artboard. So uh, let me go ahead and show you. If I here have a shape, okay, I just uh, created like a simple, um, a simple black uh, square there just to show you there is something sitting in the artboard. If we want to uh, create a copy, again, shift O to select the artboard. If I use the option Alt key on a Mac, uh, sorry, option on a Mac, Alt on a Windows, and I drag the artboard, in this case, I will create a duplicate that retains the same shape. If you just want to create a duplicate of the artboard and do not use the shape, you want to make sure to select your artboard and untick move artwork with artboard. And uh, once we untick that, now we create a copy, exactly the same shortcut, option or alt. It will duplicate the artboard without dragging the um, artwork as well. And that sometimes is very useful because you can work the other way around. You know, it can be, uh, there could be times where you have um, uh, where you have an actual uh, artboard that you wish to copy, but then it doesn't it doesn't get copied or the artwork doesn't get copied. Don't forget that is that little um, that little tick is also uh, sticky. So now that we have selected, um, we have deselected. We will have to select it again if we want to make sure that we also copy the actual design. Perfect. Uh, so let's go ahead. Uh, Carl is saying, oh, the falling water place? No, I, I didn't see the falling water. I think the falling water is in Pennsylvania, uh, but there were many, many properties. It was just astonishing. Uh, I'm going to publish some more picture on my personal Instagram. If you want to learn more about design, I have a, a work Instagram, which is at I am Clady, and that's where you can find so many tutorials and news about Adobe Live. Uh, but then I also have a personal profile called I am still Clady, I think. And that's where you can find uh, all my personal travels, design, inspirational, everyday uh, pictures there. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. We look like a little smiling face here. We have the two artboard to create our greeting cards cover and our little artboard there to start placing the illustration. We saved our file and we're set to go. So let's go ahead now and jump into the libraries panel. By the way, if you see all these panels that I'm naming and you're perhaps trying to work along with me, but you cannot find them, every single panel is located under, oops, Look, someone, <laughs> I forgot my ring on. <laughs> so someone is uh, um, ringing at my door, but don't worry, we got someone that will be able to pick it up. And uh, as you can see here, uh, we have the little library uh, panel. As I said, if you're looking for libraries and you do not know where to find them, they're not inside your workspace, you can go ahead on the window menu and there just simply select any artboard that you can hear me mention, or if you're watching any other tutorial and you do not see the uh, specific panel, or if you're looking for a specific panel yourself, or if you just wanna explore, the window top menu is the place to go. In fact, it owns all the different panels which are neatly organized by name. You can simply go ahead and see we have actions, align, appearance, artboards, and so on. In this case, I'm looking for the wonderful libraries panel. So make sure to select the libraries panel to have access to these wonderful libraries. Uh, let me know in the chat if you use the Creative Cloud libraries before. They are a time saver. As you can see here, I have a ton of libraries. I tend to have a libraries 
per project. Uh, they are pretty amazing and uh, they're very useful. And we're just going to show you um, in a moment the power of the libraries. But before I get started, you can go ahead and click on create a new library. And here you can create a new library if you want to just simply um, go ahead and give it a name. So I'm going to call it how to Adobe Live. Uh, and then click on create in order to create your library. As you can see here, you can start collecting graphic shapes. You can start collecting color, uh, typography styles, and so much more. It's just very, very useful to be able to store organize uh, and also share your assets for your design. So if you're working with someone else, you or if you just maybe delete the file, we'll also be able to access these specific graphics uh, directly within your libraries. The libraries are also accessible from your Creative Cloud app. If you head here inside your files, uh, you will see that you have your libraries and here you see that I have all my libraries that are accessible from anywhere. So even if I'm not working in the app and from here, I can create a new library, but also I can select any library I want and then I can share it. Uh, so I can invite other people to edit the library or I can also create a link and export it. So perhaps if I create a library, I will be able to add that as a link into my, my website so you can have the same library that I have as well. Okay, Stephanie saying that chat is more active here. Hello, hall. Hello, Steven. Yeah, this is the chat that I'm looking at while I work. Um, then there is also the chat inside YouTube. Uh, but the one that I'm looking at is uh, usually here on behance.net slash live. Perfect. So now that we have talked a little bit about the creative library, let me show you how you can leverage the power of the libraries. One of the things that you can do besides bringing in images and graphics, and by the way, the beauty of working with these libraries is that you can delete everything for your machine. So also great to save some space in your machine, but there is something else that you can do. You can browse Adobe stock libraries without leaving Illustrator. So you can focus on your creation. To do so, all you have to do is to click on the down pointing arrow and then select Adobe Stock. As you can see here, make sure to select Adobe Stock as the main bucket where the library is actually going to go ahead and look for assets, especially because now we have uh, this library that is uh, empty. So once we select Adobe Stock, all we have to do is to use the search bar to use any keywords you wish. In this case, we're going to use holidays. And it doesn't matter if it's all caps or not. And look at that once you insert and by the way i'm just going to zoom out i'm still inside illustrator and i'm browsing this amazing library uh, so as you can see here once i uh, you input any sort of keywords that is relevant for your brand for your project for whatever you're working on you can go ahead and see all these amazing assets uh, that are there at your fingertips and all you have to do is to click on the little plus icon in order to add them to the library that you're working on if you add it into a different library, don't worry. I can show you how you can move it around. That is definitely uh, not a problem. Um, Penny saying, I like the library, but mine is always a mess. Penny, I strongly recommend to create um, different libraries. It's always very important to separate them. That is the best way. It's better to have different libraries um, and then you can have better access to your content and it's easier uh, to organize. Also, we'll show you, you can group your content. So uh, Illustrator, the, the Creative Cloud Library panel will automatically group it for you. And for, just for you guys, you know, this uh, panel is also available in other Creative Cloud apps because that's the other beauty. It allows you to work uh, and it connects the work within the different softwares. Okay, so another thing here, we're looking at working with illustration. Uh, as you've seen for my original card, I'm looking to implement some of my illustration here. I'm specifically looking for some bespoke hand soft type. I do not want any photo. Uh, photos are great. It's just not the direction that I want to go to. So how do I do to find like some more vector graphic? I start to search the library over and over again. Absolutely not. We have filters. So if you select here, this little icon located under this search bar that is the filter menu that by clicking on it will allow you to automatically choose what sort of assets you're browsing for and in this case i'm looking for vectors i already know that i want some vector files so simply all i have to do is to go ahead and click on vectors and automatically the um adobe stock will narrow down my research and it will bring up the result only for vectors and here it is i would confidently know that here we have oh look at that we have another version of the type i might use that one just to do something a little bit different 
uh, we have many versions of the Happy Holidays uh, and I know by for a fact that these are already vector files. So all you have to do is I say simply click on the little plus icon to add it to your library. So look at that. I'm just going to click on the plus icon and here it is. It's already loading. Now um, you will see a blue tick on this document because I have already bought it, already licensed it. But you can go ahead and search as many times as you want and add as many items as you want. So let's see if we find another one here. I found one that was really cute. It had all these like type lettering uh scribbles but they were like in shape so let me go ahead and see if i can find more uh what we can do also is to just jump on the web i think it was something like this one here uh, another thing that you can do here is to search for more so let me see if i find a similar one here i think i was this one here you can right click on it and look at that it says license and save to and it gives you access to all the libraries that i have here save a preview and then it gives you access to the library or you can find similar look at that by clicking on find similar it brings back results to something that i liked although it wasn't specifically spot on to what i was looking for uh, but look at that we have christmas sale we have congratulations we have a low spring all different holiday celebration the best christmas um sunny day all sort of happy new year those are all very very beautiful and uh, you can simply go ahead and choose whatever suits your needs or maybe just you know look how beautiful this season greetings you can go ahead you click on the control key and find similar again so you can go ahead and dive deep and find as many as you want those are just fantastic again simply click on the plus icon in order to add them and you will see in this case i have a little cart icon that will basically tell me hey just click on the cart icon to license it now the difference between an unlicensed adobe stock item that you find inside your library and a licensed item is that whenever you have a licensed item you can double click on it and it will open up as a vector file inside illustrator so this is actually an illustrator file that opens up and is ready for you to edit uh, question from YouTube from uh, Cody Bear. How do I add colors to my library? Would, thank you so much for the question, Cody. I will jump into that in just a second. Um, now, the difference for something that we haven't downloaded yet is that if we double click on it, it will open up as an image. So as you can see, this is just an image. It's not a vector. It has the Adobe stock little watermark there. Um, you cannot properly see it because it's just like a drop shadow which i think is really really cool because it doesn't disturb our image but it's there it gives you also the name of the assets you can see here a little bit more the watermark uh, but is this the uh, this is just something that you cannot use as a vector it's just a single image but it will give you a, a great idea if you just perhaps want to use at the moment this specific uh, document just to see if it makes sense within your design i think that is a perfect way to jump start and decide if you then want to uh, purchase th this uh, and license this uh, stock or not Okay, so in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and close this one. Uh, and by the way, you can add as many as you want inside your library, it doesn't cost anything. They're just sitting there. Uh, so, uh, Cody, how do we add an, a color inside your library? Well, very simple, simply select whatever you wanna add. In this case here, I have this little gradient and then click on the plus icon, look at it at the bottom of our, um, um, of our uh, library sorry li library panel and then once you click on it it will allow you to uh, add the graphic itself in this case is a graphic because we have a gradient applied to it but if we do have a color so let's say that we have here this one in green let's see it makes the shape screen and then let's make it of another color here i'm just showing you an example how we can do that once we select the shape with the specific colors first of all select it it doesn't matter what shape it is i'm just gonna make a circle here with the blue just so you can see the difference here so it doesn't make matter what sort of shape we have here all we have to do is to select it and then head to the libraries panel again at the plus icon located at the bottom of the panel itself and here you will have the opportunity to select the fill color so by simply clicking on fill color you will be able to access and uh, have the color there ready for you to use and again as i said it doesn't matter which shape you use simply click on the plus icon and add the color but i want to show you a little bit more since we're talking about colors and we can create our color palette as i said i will share with you the color palette that i created there uh, but let me show you how you can access more color i haven't planned that but i think it's actually a fantastic 
opportunity to show you how to use color and how to add them to your library. So here, all we have to do, we have a few options. We can either uh, extract a theme color for a specific image, or we can simply go ahead and click on explore and use the keywords here, in this case, holidays, to start and browse colors that have been published on color.adobe.com. And as you can see here, we have many different color palettes. There are there, look how cool and fun is this one. And uh, as you can see, once we select the palette that we like, we have the chance to add it to the library or download it as a JPEG. That's absolutely up to you. Now I'm gonna go ahead and select add to library and you will see that here, because uh, our last library that we used was how to Adobe Live, it will automatically know which is the last library that we used and automatically add this color palette to our library. In fact, if we jump back into Illustrator real quick, you will see that we have this color theme that is ready for us to use. Isn't that amazing? So they will be uh, stored so we can keep track of it and we'll be able to share it as well. And you can keep doing uh, as much as you want. So let me go ahead and add a couple other libraries, uh, co sorry, color themes, which I think they're really, really cool. So let's put winter holidays. Let's see if that changes. Uh, winter holidays. And again, you can add as many libraries as you want. I kind of like this one here. You can also just appreciate it. You can download it as a JPEG and you can go on and as I said, download as many as you want. Perfect. I'm just going to go ahead and add this other one. So it looks like that we have a few and then I'm going to have a little bit more different greens as well. Okay. So once we jump back into our, um, into our illustrator, we have all the libraries that populated inside the credit library as we go. And uh, as I would mentioned before, I think uh, it was Teresa or Penny. So you can go ahead and group Penny. You can group your library simply by uh, clicking on this other little uh, icon here next to the filter and it allows you to group by type. Probably you have them as custom groups, so it looks a bit messy. So here I have vectors, color, single colors, color themes is all um, you know, uh, not pretty organized, but if you select group by type, Illustrator will do the job for you and just put the colors together, the themes together, color themes together, images together, graphics together, types together, styles together. It would just keep organizing everything for you. So again, it's this little icon next to the filter and then make sure to select group by type. And also you can sort it by name or the date in which they are modified. So the latest one will be on top. See the greens is the one that we added last uh, and therefore that's now placed there on top. Okay, I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller so we have more space to create our art. And it's now time to start bringing in our uh, design. So as I say, simply double click on it to open it up inside Illustrator. And then here, um, I want to bring in just the type. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the type. Um, maybe let's go ahead and select also the little dots there. Let's see if we have this and simply press Command C to copy it. You have two options. You can click and drag it inside the library as well uh, in order to add it. See, it's been added to our graphics or so maybe if you're working just on research now and you're researching elements that you want to use for your cards, you can just chuck everything that you want to use back in the libraries and then you can close it for another another time. Well, if you're working together, you have the option either to place it in the libraries or simply to copy it and then add back to your document and press Command V uh, to paste it there and then click and drag to resize it. So this is a wonderful type that is uh, uh, there available for you on Adobe Stock. If you want to see more and learn more on Adobe Stock, you can also go on stock.adobe.com. That is the full website. Uh, what I showed you so far is the wonderful possibility of integrating these services within the app. Amazing time saver. It will allow you to concentrate. Usually when you head on the website here, we can get distracted. See, I just jumped to color and I started to do different things. Uh, so stock.adobe.com is absolutely wonderful when integrated in the app, allows you to focus on your workflow. Uh, but if you're just perhaps spending time on research and this is the time for you to look for four more and more images all you have to do is to click here on stop.w.com and you have uh, uh, access to curated collection of uh, images uh, photos footage uh, music illustration templates and so much more uh, then all you have to do here is also 
to use the search bar to, uh, again, like we did before, have a little selection. Holidays was our last uh, keyword. And here we have a, a, a filter like we did before. So images, videos, audio, template, 3D, free and premium. If you're looking for vector, uh, this is not the main uh, drop down where you want to narrow down your research. We have actually have a, a specific filter that is within your research. So once you start, in this case, we looked at uh, holidays, images, here we have this little icon there with this settings icon, which is our filter icon that allow us to really access all this filter that will help you narrow down. Like I will really doubt that you cannot find what you're looking for here because this is just amazing. It allows us to search vectors. And then if we can search all content, if you want the standard, if you want the premium, if you want something that it was undiscovered. So something that is perhaps really new, uh, something done by your local artist, which I think is very amazing. Uh, here we go look at that we have all narrowed down for you uh, if you want a transparent background you have the option of choosing illustration with a transparent background uh, if you want an orientation horizontal vertical maybe you want a square or maybe you want a panoramic again we're narrowing down narrowing down do you want people or you don't want people let's exclude people uh, so perhaps um, we have just illustration and then if you want pixels megapixels if you want a specific color so you can search for a specific color and again it will narrow down over and over again I think that is pretty amazing. Like we said before, all you have to do, we have 3D as well. All you have to do here is to simply add it inside. I'm just going to go ahead and clear some of these. You can go ahead and clear all filters. And in this case, I'm just going to go back to our vectors. Uh, and what you can do here is to, let's see if I can find that text that I was looking for before. It was just like the scribbly types. Here it is. I think it's so amazing. Okay. So um, here, all you're left to do, this is uh, uh, different languages and uh, uh, we have the text into a tree, which I think is super beautiful. All you have to do is to either license it or save it to the library. Once you click save to the library, like we did before, um, it will be downloaded in the last used library. In this case, I was probably working on something before, so it is in, um, in my brand guidelines, but I can go ahead and manage it and change this into like our how to. Uh, Adobe Live. Let's see where it is. How to Adobe Live. This is the now library. So I probably should have done that a little bit before, but now I know that if I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, add anything else to my library, it will be downloaded to my um, uh, How to Adobe Live. Here it is. Perfect. Okay. So now let's now jump back into Illustrator. So this is uh, Adobe Stock. I would strongly recommend you to go and explore it. As I say, there is also a lot of free content. So there are free Adobe Stock. Uh, assets that you can use uh, a lot more than 200 million I guess assets in the full, in the uh, full collection which I think is pretty astonishing see here just for the word holidays we have over 68,000 results that are free and accessible for you which is pretty pretty amazing okay so now here we have uh, our little font that we downloaded from adobe stock is a vector that means that we can scale it we can do as many things as we want we can change the color at the moment i'm just going to leave it there because i'm just going to start to use this time to integrate some illustration that we will use simply by using shapes and by the way if you um, want to follow along you can follow along otherwise i will provide this for you uh, they are available there and in the file that i'm going to be sharing which is exactly this one you have some layers, which is our next step, creating layers. You can go ahead and also see the work in progress. So those are the starting point that you can use as a reference when creating the design. Uh, and this is something that I've created and I decided to leave it there uh, just so you can have an idea of what is the starting point when creating this, uh, this illustration. I think it could be very, very, very useful for you to see how I created. But of course, please, let's follow along and let's do it together right now. So as I say, the first thing I want to jump into my layers panel. Layers will allow me to control my document and the assets that are inside the document so much better. So all you have to do is to click on the little plus icon located at the bottom of the layers panel is a little uh, square with a plus in order to create a few layers. Just click on it. It will just keep adding layer. Don't worry if you create extra, you can always delete it and then you can go ahead and start naming them. So here we'll have the background and then here I will have a final. Um, and then I can have a work in progress and then I can have an illustration. 
okay so again this just work as buckets for you to place the content uh, and then have more control of it when you work now the background will be placed at the bottom of course let me spell it you can also double click on it um, background here it is and you can change it as many times as you want just make sure that the order is there because the order really matters let's jump back into the one that i created before look what happens if i bring my background see you can toggle visibility with the little eye icon you can lock it uh, by preventing the changes so if i now click and drag the background is preserved but look what happened if i move it on top that background will sit on top of the other layer and whatever is the content of the layer that is displayed above will be displayed above the content of the layers before be, below so make sure to have the layers that will need to be uh, uh, below just at the bottom of the layer stack so i'm going to click and drag and make sure that the background sits at the very bottom of our layer and time is ticking so let's go ahead and start creating some of these illustration and i want to show you how to intertwine it probably we're going to have to borrow some from the one that I already created we can start with the snowflakes all i've done here is to go ahead to our shape tool and use the line segment tool to create a line uh, and press the letter d to apply the default setting for a line which is black and white and here from the little fill and stroke control you can select the fill and then select none to make it transparent so just we have our little stroke there and from the properties panel you can control the size of your stroke and of course the color as well but because we have downloaded all these beautiful color themes why not just simply go ahead and click on any of these color themes uh, to make sure that your first of all oops make sure that your uh, stroke is selected rather than the field because otherwise you won't show up since we here we only have a stroke so press the letter v to select your stroke make sure that you select the stroke from a stroke control and then simply click on any of this color located inside your color theme by the way if you do not like to use color from the color panels and you wish to use it inside uh, your swatches panel you can always right click inside uh, on top of the uh, theme and then select uh, add color theme to swatches by doing so once you work with your swatches panel again as every other panel also the swatches panel is located inside your swatches you can go ahead and simply uh, click inside the swatches it's absolutely up to you and to your preferences is the same either the swatches panel or the libraries i tend to use the libraries just because they're always there and they're quite quite useful okay so what i'm going to do here now press the letter l to access the ellipse tool and i'm going to create this little uh, ellipse here shift x to swap the color between the fill and the strokes you can see i'm doing it here shift x i'm changing the color in between the two so in this case i want to bring the color to the fill from the stroke to the fill again shift x boom done and i'm going to change the color to a bit of the lighter color here so um let's go ahead and make this one a lighter blue just like so maybe this one here and then i'm going to use the alt option key and click and drag to create a copy and place it at the bottom and now uh, I can perhaps press Command G to group all of that. And I want to rotate it to make the snowflakes. How do I do that? I'm going to go ahead and select my uh, rotation tool, which is should be um, just right here. Let me see if I can find it real quick. I also believe that the uh, letter R is the access to it. Here it is. It's just, oops, it's just here under the type tool inside the toolbar. Is our rotate tool so press the letter r to access the rotate tool and in this case i'm going to go ahead and place it in the middle of my little bar and i'm going to use the option key to uh, create the origin of this little uh, rotation now if you click preview you will see the rotation taking place use 45 degree in this case and then simply select copy now if you select ok it will rotate your object but it will also um simply just rotate the object itself but by creating copy it will rotate it and make a copy at the same time so let me show you here we go by clicking copy we have rotated 45 degree and create a copy it looks like i really have not centered it so let's go ahead and replace can you see the center of the rotation is quite low um, let me go ahead and select the little bar it looks like this is the center here unfortunately is blue so we cannot see it if you wish to change um we can go ahead from the layers panel and change the color of the layer i'm just going to make it orange Let's see if that's, that's going to show up a little bit more. See, uh, before, because we have a blue stroke and a blue uh, bounding box and a blue layer, uh, the color of the selection will be also blue. So it was pretty much becoming invisible. I changed it into orange, so it's easy to see. This is the center now of our um, little stick. We can press the letter R, use the option uh, key or command key to use the rotation there. 
and it looks like we missed let's go ahead and group it all so we can do it all together here again one more time r the rotation in there use the option key and the rotate panel will come up and now we rotate it to duplicate the rotation use command d and here it is we created our little um snowflakes and what i've done here i've selected these uh, two sides and then simply uh, using the shift and command key shift by constraining pr proportion and alt or option key to uh, uh, make the transformation respectively to the center i can resize and make my little snowflakes here okay so those are little elements that you can start to add to your design i've just seen the time i can believe it we needed to go in uh illustrator uh, sorry in indesign as well to set it up for print i'm probably gonna just simply show you real quick intertwine and then we're gonna jump into indesign by the way don't worry we have um another uh how to coming up next week so maybe i can focus more in the illustration let me know in the chat if that's what you want to do uh but i will also make this illustration available for you as i said um i have created uh the way that i've done them as well so i've actually created the work in progress which is down here available for you so that was the snowflake those are simple circle those are line created with that uh, pen curvature tool and those are literally uh, the leaves and the and the little um, curvature uh, stems and the little sphere put together so it's just a, a, a way of finding the shape that is closer to the graphic the that you want to create very simple and just real quick to create this drop all i've done is to create a rectangle so i started from a rectangle and then use the corner uh, little widget to make the top of the rectangle uh, rounded and then press the pen tool to add a little point in the middle and erase the points on the side and here it is and then i just started to modify it using the uh, little smooth tool over here so i just made the corner a little bit smoother uh, and then i just drag it up a little bit just like that so if you were wondering how to create these do droplets pretty easy start from a rectangle and so on okay uh, so um, what I'm going to do here, because we got three minutes, four minutes to go, we have next week together as well. I'm probably going to uh, just sort of do a little recap and show you um, perhaps how to do the shadows in the illustration. And maybe we can do part two on how to set it up for print. So maybe we can actually split these into a part two and uh, create another stream that is just about exporting it. Um, I think that's probably be the best. Otherwise real quick what i wanted to show you is uh, intertwine so let's go back into our working file here press the letter m select our background and click and drag to create a background i'm gonna make it quite dark just because i want some contrast here and then press the letter v to select our text uh, we're gonna bring it in the middle and i want to show you how you create that intertwine effect so the font is from adobe stock the little illustration is something that i created how do i make this text and the font work together so as you can see if i place it on top of the text it will absolutely cover that up and uh, here let's make sure that we have these two elements within the same layer we can lock the background so we can simply click and drag without um, modifying the background now in order to intertwine these elements all you have to do is to click and drag over both the elements that you want to intertwine to select them now look at my previous illustration i had a lot of little foliage there first place all the foliage because you can you cannot intertwine and two elements that are already intertwined again so you want to first of all place all the elements that you want to intertwine together then select them all head to object and here select intertwine and from intertwine select make so again object intertwine make is the path to go and once you're done so all you have to do is to click and drag on the areas that you wish to intertwine so they will start overlapping that was one of the key of creating this piece of illustration so click and drag and you can simply replace one area for the other again maybe here we want this bit of the cherry to go at the bottom Maybe here we want the cherry to go on the top of the P, but we don't want it. We want it at the bottom of the Y and so on. So you can keep going here and simply select the area that you wish to hide. Uh, now look what's happened. It, the, it, it might give you some issue if you don't select all the paths. Just try to select the entire path that you wish to hide. In this case, perhaps it's better to do something like that. And if you're not happy with it, just simply use the command Z or control Z in order to hide it, just like so. And you can keep going as much as you want to hide and show area that you want to uh, modify. So here, perhaps we can show the high 
and we can uh, show this other bit of the L and we can show this other bit of uh, the H and so on. So you can have fun with this tool and choose what to hide and what to reveal thanks to these wonderful inter intertwine. You just maybe have to give it a little bit of a thought of how you want to intertwine the elements before you keep going. See here, perhaps I would have to select it a little bit more. And whenever you're done, press on B. Now, what if you're not happy with the way they intertwine it? You can select your uh, intertwine group and then again, head to object, intertwine. And in this case, what you're gonna be selecting is edit. And you can simply go ahead and keep editing as much as you want. So here looks like the H went completely missing. So again, click and drag in order to uh, move it. And if you want to move it again, just again, simply click on it one more time in order to change the way that is intertwined. Okay, so uh, we're probably gonna do a part two. I haven't seen what the chat was saying. Um, yes the libraries we spend a lot of time on the libraries because i think that's so so useful and we're going to pick up from here and i'm going to show you how to use this graphic in order to place it inside an indesign file and set it up for print so let's say that this is part one of our greeting cards uh and something else that you can do about a library you can also select all this art and then simply drop it inside the library make sure to unlock any elements so in this case it will be drop there and ready to be moved inside InDesign to be printed. Here it is, we have the artwork, as you can see is now a standalone artwork inside our library. Unfortunately, it is time to say goodbye. I can't believe time goes way too fast. Uh, we have uh, the lovely Annika coming up with Let's InDesign. Don't forget that you can re-watch the stream on uh, uh, the Adobe Live YouTube channel that is available for you, so don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you next week here back at Adobe Live with a brand new episode of How to Graphic Design. But that's it, unfortunately, for tonight, folks. I will see you very, very soon. And uh, ciao, ciao for now. And happy holidays. <laughs>